Right. I am going to show you using Google Sheets exactly how to make a graph and edit it so that it looks the way it should look uh, so that you can use it for progress monitoring. Um, bear with me because I don't always remember exactly every step and every place to find all of the buttons that I want. Hopefully my modeling will help you feel confident about having to click around a lot of places before you find what you need. I think it's kind of common. So to make my graph, I want to highlight my data on my spreadsheet right through to there. And there's an icon here that looks like a bar chart, and that's where I'm going to go insert chart. If you're using numbers or using Excel or a different spreadsheet program, this is going to work out a little bit differently, but in the toolbar there will be something, some kind of icon about how to create a chart. So when I click that, it gives me a chart, and it gives me a chart that's actually um, a bar graph, which is not what I want, but luckily it also opens the chart editor on this side. If that chart editor isn't open when your graph appears, if you click your graph, three dots will appear in the right hand corner right there. So go ahead and click those. And if I choose edit chart, then I come back to this chart editor. So if you lose the chart editor, those three dots will get you there. So here we go. I want my line graph, not a column chart. And then I have a little problem. Um, I have a couple problems. I don't like my legend up top. I don't have a title for my graph. I don't have labels for my axes. And also it's treating my sessions down here as if that's data. So I need to find the box right here at the bottom of the setup where I'm using row one as headers. So row one, these are um, headers, this is labels, and then column A is also labels. So I'm going to click those two, and now I don't have that sessions down there. I am going to keep on going. I'm going to click over here to customize now because I've got my basics done. When I click customize, I'm just going to go down the list and make sure everything um, is the way I want it. So I need uh, chart and access titles. I'm going to start with a chart title and it's going to be oral reading fluency, words correct per minute. And that'll pop right into the chart. As soon as I enter it here, it pops in. Uh, I need to also have um, titles for my horizontal axis. So those are my sessions. as well as my vertical axis, which is going to be words correct per minute. All right, that's everything in that. Now I'm gonna look at series. And one thing, nope, I don't wanna change anything there. I'm gonna leave that alone. At legend, I mentioned before I don't want my legend up top in the articles that you'll read everything always shows the legend on the right hand side oh so I'm going to do a little bit more editing on my horizontal and vertical axis on the vertical the labels that I put down here are actually not numeric it's text so I want to treat those labels as text so that it shows a b c d that was my baseline and then one, two, three, four for my sessions. If you've put dates down there, you'll also want to treat those labels as text, otherwise it'll do math. Do I want to slant my labels? Nah, I think I'll leave them alone. And I do not want to reverse my axis order. Okay. My vertical axis, one of the things I'm having a problem with here is that because we started with about 50 or 60 words per minute, it's kind of hard to see where the progress is and hard to see how we're following our aim line. So I'm gonna set my minimum value here to be 50. And that just, it's a, uh, I mean, it's a little bit of a cheat with your data because it, it makes it, it makes the progress look a little bit more dramatic. Um, but I also think in this particular case, it makes it easier to read. Uh, one of the things we wanna be looking at is if, if we're looking at this aim line, 
is our students' progress meeting the aim line? Like here at intervention number one, it was not. We were below where we needed to be the whole time. Um, but it's kind of hard to see what's happening with intervention two because it's cl tracking pretty close. And tracking close is fine. And I think that's about all the changes that I want to make. So that creates the graph that I want to have. Once I've got this graph done, I can cut and paste it into any other document. And if you're using Google Documents, it's really nice because it'll link back to the spreadsheet. Also, if I were to go in, uh, let me close this editor out, move my chart out of my way. So if I want to put additional data in, if I want to just enter in more data over here, it'll automatically update my chart. See how I did that? I'm putting some really big numbers in. So you can just see that it grew. So um, that's a really nice feature as well. Once you've got this set up, it'll just keep on working for you. And I think that's really what I want to tell you about that part of um, how to really format that graph so that it has all the parts that you need. Uh, you did notice I had to struggle a little bit. I didn't always know exactly where all the things were that I wanted. Uh, sometimes I feel like they move. I don't think that they actually move. It just I can't remember where they went. So don't feel bad about that. Um, that's just how it is. And maybe one day we'll all be really good at it. Personally, I go back and forth between using Excel and Sheets, and they don't work quite the same way. So uh, yeah, I'm going to blame that for the fact that I wasn't completely fluent doing this. All right, that's all I've got for this one. I hope that helps you um, make your graphs really beautiful.